How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number three in my QBasic series. And in this video we're going to be going over printing. Now I'm already inside this QB64 folder and let's just launch QB64. And we're going to continue working with that hello.boss file that we created last time so you can always select it from the uh, recent projects or open and choose the file. So right now all we've done is just print out a simple message which is hello world. Whenever we want to print something, we first use the keyword print, all in capital letters, and then it follows with a string. Now, uh, a string is surrounded with double quotes. And in uh, languages like Python, you could do like single quotes around a string. So, you know, put in a, um, I think it's, I don't even know, I'm not good at grammar, apostrophe? Yeah, I think so, an apostrophe. Anyway, um, in Python, you can do that, put single quotes around a string. In QBasic, that won't work if we actually ran that. Actually, I will. Just for the heck of it. Nothing gets printed yet. So we need to use these double quotes. Oops. Okay. And there we go. So now let's get into a little bit more advanced printing. Let's go over some things we can do. First thing is, what if we put a semicolon? after this string. Well, let's print out a message. I'm going to print out I am Adam. And let's run this now. Now you'll notice the I am Adam is printed after this hello world. Uh, and just keep in mind there's no space there. Now what this semicolon is for is for concatenation. So in other languages, it's usually something like a addition symbol, so, you know, the plus sign for concatenating strings together. Well, in this case, the semicolon um, basically says whatever's printed next, print it after where this print statement ended. So, where this print statement ended, that's where the next one is going to start. So, that's why there was no space. If we wanted a space, we'd either have to put a space here or here. So let's run that now. So there we go. Hello world, I am Adam. Next one I want to go over is the comma. So now if we use a comma, the next message I want to print out is uh, who are you? Alright, let's run this. And you'll notice here there's a tab. So it's similar in the sense um, with the semicolon that uh, it takes some, it like, concatenates it, so it takes this first string and then the second string, and the second string prints out where the first string ended. But with the comma, there's a tab between them. Now, uh, we can do all this in one line, so we can use them all in one line. Uh, good, sorry, goodbye. Let's just put two commas. Uh, have a nice, and then, you know, we can just put day. So have a nice day. All right. We're going to run this. So, it printed goodbye, then it put two tabs, then the have a nice, and since there was a semicolon between them, it took, after nice ended, then it printed out day right where it stopped. So that's why there's no space there, because we didn't put one in between. And I think that's everything I want to go over. Oh no, one more thing, numbers. Now, we could always put... I am 19. So, right here... We could always put a number inside the string. So, hello world, I am Adam and I am 19. But what if we had some number stored in a variable? You might not know what a variable is. I will go over it in a later tutorial. But you have some number stored in a variable, kind of like in math class, you know, x equals 3 sort of thing. Well, we can always, you know, uh, add a number to a string when being printed out by using our semicolon and then the number. So I can just put 19 here. And let's run this now. 
Hello World, it still says I am 19, and there's still the tab following the 19. Now, that is all I want to talk about this time. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a comment on this video, like this video, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.